come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. (laughs) Welcome to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast coming at you every Saturday, whether you are ready for it or not, where we pick a movie. That's chosen round robin. So you really have no idea what's in store for you at the beginning of the night. And then we sit around and we talk about it for your listening pleasure. Sometimes the person who chose it doesn't know what's in store. That's right. Well, those are the most fun Sometimes. ones. When it's kind of like a book club for movies, as yeah. it's been described mm-hmm. before. That's true. I love that saying. I mm-hmm. love it. Yeah. We pick a movie, then we watch it, and then we throw it to the wolves, talk about it, tear it apart, analyze it. And uh, try to have some fun with it. So hopefully you'll stick with us. And uh, we also hope you'll join the Freak Show family on uh, Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or join us on Instagram, Saturday Night Freak Show. And uh, give us a like or subscribe if you like what you hear here. On uh, iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, wherever here, you found yeah. us, here, here. You got to find a better way of saying that. If you like what you hear, here. Yeah. Uh, so tonight's movie was chosen by Holly. Yeah. Holly. What do we watch? Um, tonight we, we watched Sphere. 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 Not Orb. No. Not ball. It's kind of a shitty movie Not title, honestly. Sphere? Yeah. It's very exciting. You're like, ooh, Sphere. I don't no? know. I don't know. It's kind of, it, it could be like kind of menacing. I don't know. I, I got I was, Tron vibes. I was like, this is going to be like an 80s computer technology <laughs> movie. It's going to be terrible. But I was like, yeah, I like geometry. Sphere. <laughs> That's not true. I hate geometry. Or you were like, I'm terrified of geometry and Sphere sounds yeah, horrifying. I like shapes. Shapes are I good. mean, I guess if you're thinking it's like a Cube knockoff, I could see that because Cube is a great movie. When was Cube? Uh, was the 2000s, was it? 2000s, it was the 90s? late nineties, early two thousands. Like, yeah, it was. Oh yeah. shit, it might have been early. Was it, oh, was hold it on, before hold this? On. I will fact check. It feels like it this was, was maybe nineteen ninety eight. If I think Cube was before this, that's what I'm going with. But I mean, there Captain again, Google is but checking there again, right now. this is based on the Michael Crichton book, so it's not necessarily based. 1997, on... one year before this. Oh movie. shit! So, so not... everybody was into geometry. And yeah, like, geometry was the shapes the hot were the thing. shit in the mm-hmm. 90s. Everyone loves some shapes. It's true. You know, like clothing, like everything had shapes on, like geometric patterns and stuff. So mm-hmm. that's kind of true. When did triangle come out? No, oh, yeah. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Parallelogram. <laughs> Rhombus. Uh, Rhombus. Yes. Rhombus. We're going to yeah. make a movie called Rhombus. Uh-huh. It's great. Uh, so this was, uh, do we establish what year this was? 98. 98. And uh, directed by? Barry Levinson. And why do we know him? We know him from Rain Man and uh, fucking uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Toys. Oh, most toys. Dustin Hoffman slash Robin Williams <laughs> movies. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah, but not the good ones. Like yeah. usually no, like the the weird shit that people are like, you like toys? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the weird shit. Yeah, Barry Levinson's he always did, been he one of those guys. Other stuff, well, yeah. he did like uh, Diner and Wise Guys. Wise yes, Guys is about yes. a bunch of uh, siding salesmen. Oh, it's two guys. I think it's like Joe Piscopo and is that Danny DeVito? I can't I think remember. So. And recently, well, recently, he got in on the found footage horror thing and directed one of them, which was just weird. <laughs> uh, it was called The Bay. Anybody see that? Nope. Nope. No. It was kind of in like an eco horror movie because, of course, he's uh, too smart to be just doing B horror movies. Mm-hmm. He does A movies. A movies? <laughs> <laughs> the triple A titles. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. Well, this is what we're here for, listener. We're here to bring a light on a uh, forgotten classic slice of 1990s cinema. Sci-fi slash horror? Yes. Drama? According to IMDb. (laughs) Yeah. Did it say action in there, too? I Probably. hope that it would. It may be a little bit of comedy. Sci-fi, because, horror, yeah. action, Sci-fi thriller. Horror, thriller, yeah. yeah. Action, thriller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Part yeah. of the reason I picked it is because last week was the 20th anniversary of this movie. 
Oh yeah. shit! You know, well, it lo- visually it looks pretty good for being twenty. I was gonna old. say, you know what? My like beef with this movie actually has nothing to do with like the the actual styling and then and the digital effects. I really don't have a huge problem with it, considering. Yeah. I think what dates it is the actors that are in it more than anything. I think so too. You like, know, because what? When's the last time you saw Dustin Hoffman or Sharon Stone or Lee? Schreiber at this in point. anything in anything yeah exactly. remember when Sharon Stone used to be a big star mm-hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> seems like forever ago yeah I remember liking her in some stuff and then not liking her in other things like yeah. like Catwoman you know, Sphere and oh, I mean what yeah Catwoman was, uh, <laughs> I think that might be the last thing I've seen her in honestly. oh god what was, uh, that? What was that fucking uh, western Quick and the Dead Quick and the Dead oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah that might have been the last thing I saw her yeah. in. Yeah, but she had a good run there with uh, yeah. Total Recall and yeah. uh, Basic mm-hmm. Instinct. Mm-hmm. The famous Basic Instinct. King mm-hmm. Solomon's Minds. No? Mm. Wes Craven's Deadly nope. Blessing. No, okay. We're going backwards in time. Yeah. Be um, so this is, you said it was written by Michael Crichton? No, it was the based novel, on a book. The novel is Michael Crichton. The screenplay was uh, uh, William... No, Kurt Wimmer. He wrote it? That Kurt name sounds Wimmer. familiar. He wrote The Thomas Crown Affair and uh, oh, shit. the Total Recall remake, Salt, and, Law Abiding uh, Citizens. Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, wait. No. Kurt Wimmer. Did he write and direct Equilibrium? He did. The Gunkata movie he with did. Christian Bale That's and uh, right. who was the other guy in that? I can't remember. Was it Tay Diggs? Might have been. For all I know. Been. What year was it? Um. Aughts, right? Early aughts? Feels like it was late 90s. That then actually, was, by the poster, it's all blue. It's yeah, it's all blue. Hell. Then it yeah. was probably Tay Dix. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this takes place in an underwater habitat for the most part, which yes. uh, is what you're talking about with the production design. Um, how many movies take place in like the underwater habitat that looks exactly like this? Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea. Yeah. We watched I mean, on the show, yeah. yeah. Basically, there's a heavy avi- abyss vibe going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Or for some of you, Leviathan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for some others of you, Deep Star Six. Yeah. Am I right? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, remember, they all came out the same year. Yeah, they all yeah. came out yeah. back to back to back. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow it was a weird Hollywood period like, we went through, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this one was probably, was this like in the era of like Red Planet and stuff like that or uh, Mission to Mars? Well, Red Planet felt like this movie, but it was probably several years after this. So, sure I mean, this was one. what, the year before Deep Blue Sea? Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, so what's uh, what's what's going on in this movie, Holly? I Holly? don't what? fucking know, Colin. <laughs> I, I what are you talking know. about? This classic piece of science fiction. This piece. Yeah. Yeah. This piece. <laughs> <laughs> the title cards are lies in this movie, I've determined. There's chapter titles. Yes. Like like you're reading a book. There's mm-hmm. probably like what, like seven or eight of them? I'm I'm guessing that they pulled that right from the Michael Crichton book. They had to have, they right? Had to have. They oh, had yeah. to have. Because they do not correlate with what happens no, after. Not them. at all. Well, Michael Crichton, he wants to remind you that he, he was still got a doctor. It. Well, he was a doc well, he's he trained to be a doctor, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I think we talked about him before because we did Westworld, mm-hmm. which was written and directed by Michael Crichton. But he started off uh, um, training, you know, medical school, and then I think quit, and then became like a movie maker. Yeah. Um, but because what was his first novel was the Andromeda Strain. So basically, he takes these science fiction concepts and then. Um, and wasn't that also a movie with Dustin Hoffman? Which one? The Andromeda Strain. I have no idea. I don't Andromeda. think he was in the original. I can't, and I can't wasn't, remember who wasn't was in it. Benjamin but they, Bratt in that with Dustin Hoffman? I think. Hold on. This I, might I'm be like the, there was like a TV remake or two yeah. part TV like movie. A series or something. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Can't that could be. Recall, I didn't see it. I think I read the book a long, long time ago, but it was basically like heavily. The 2008 version has Benjamin Bratt in it. No Dustin Hoffman? Nope. That was, a, that was a TV miniseries. What it was missing. Doesn't it? With the master thespian, Dustin Hoffman. This movie does have a good cast. It has a great cast. Yeah. Who's in it? Dustin Hoffman, Sharon Stone, uh, Huey Lewis. Yeah. 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 The yeah. Huey Lewis. Yeah. Of Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Sam Jackson, Lee Schreiber, Queen Latifah, Peter Coyote. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's about it. I think that's it. <laughs> that's and then about it, yeah. the nameless, uh, what's her name? The cook. <laughs> yeah. She's, Who, none she of us wanders, remembered. She really wanders being. through the kitchen one time with some muffins and then dies. And we're supposed to remember what? who she is. She becomes a plot point later on. Oh. Don't worry. We'll try to understand. Yeah. We'll try to dissect and under, maybe we'll have a greater understanding of this film oh, by the end I, of this discussion. I hope so. I, yeah. Mm, mm. It's a mind bender. Let's put it that to put it mildly. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. So the idea is. Uh, the concept here is that a alien spacecraft has crashed in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, but like, what, 300 years ago? It's got like coral growing over it that the height of the coral, because as Sharon Stone says, it grows one inch per year. You can set your watch by it. Mm-hmm. Based on the length of the coral, it has yeah. been there since like 1709 or something. Right. Say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. This is important. Important. Yes. Well, maybe not. I mean, allegedly. No, they shoot off a lot of shit in the beginning of this movie that's important, oh, yeah. and you f- by the end of it, you forget because it's the longest fucking movie of all time. First <laughs> first act is is constant scientific info dump. Constant. Mm-hmm. Because he's a doctor, constant. Michaela, and yeah. it's all science. Maybe that's what I was going for. Michael Crichton likes to take these sci-fi concepts and science the shit out of them. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. yeah. And he was on a hot streak in the 90s because Jurassic Park. Right. It was Congo. Yeah, 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 well, that's, yeah. You Let's got Congo, not forget Congo. You got, yeah. uh, disclosure. Anybody? Disclosure. Mm, yeah. Virtual reality with the yeah rising mm-hmm. sun. Mm-hmm. Rising sun. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Twister, mm-hmm. which I think he oh, wrote. Twister. I will be the first to admit I fucking love Twister. I will watch it every oh, yeah. day for yeah. the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. There ain't nothing wrong with Twister. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. I would bring it, but we would all love it too much. <laughs> <laughs> Twister's fun. Some I of those other movies movie. that we've mentioned. Are not. Dude, I'm going to leave it up to I you to find out like which ones. I remember being like 12 years old and going outside and quoting that movie just because it was like about to rain. I'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, she's really talking today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Congo crosses into awesomely bad pretty quickly. Uh-huh. Congo, yeah. Congo might be a good one to yeah. watch on this show. There's, yeah. there's a gorilla wearing what looks like a Nintendo Power Glove mm-hmm. in that movie and mm-hmm. like signing its language to people and insulting them with its sign language. It's pretty yeah. great. And that one might be fun to watch. Yeah. And the evil the silverbacks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Congo. Yeah. Mm. Tim Curry with that crazy accent. Oh, that's right. Oh, He's yeah. in it too. I didn't forget. Yeah. I remember there was like a there, there was a period where there was like a lot of ape movies coming out. Yeah. It was yeah. The Mighty Joe the Young. Mighty Joe Young. And yep. there was yeah. another was that when the new or the revamped King Kong came out? No. That was later. That but was there's later. George of the Jungle too, which That's was what around I'm the same time. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, there was a, a lot of like presence. Gorilla yeah. jungle movies all at the same time. Mm-hmm. What is Hollywood's love? I think with Anaconda was around then too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 See, yeah. now that's a freak show movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. that is. Yeah. Dude, that's coming. Don't More worry. More crazy accents <laughs> from John Voight. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, so in this movie. Oh, yeah, this movie. There's, uh, well, don't worry. I mean, we can just start talking about Event Horizon because there's uh, some parallels. <laughs> there are some parallels to Event Horizon. That's true. You guys are that's talking about true. Event Horizon. Well, right? and, it's, and it's 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 funny because, like I, I told you guys earlier, I was thinking about what movie to watch tonight, and I asked my brother. I was like, what should, what should I watch? What would you want to watch on the freak show? Sci-fi, horror, whatever. He's like, Event Horizon. And I was like, well, th- we've already done that, you know, on a past episode before this group. And then immediately after, he's like, Sphere. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm guessing those are correlated. They have to be. Otherwise, he wouldn't have immediately thought well, of that. I suppose in some ways, right? We're both, we're talking about a ship that uh, goes through some kind of cosmic rift in space, yeah. mm-hmm. a black hole, encounters something, goes into another dimension. Mm-hmm. It encounters an alien intelligence, right. which then, you know, whatever. Uh, it, it plays mind games. Manifests. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're yeah. afraid of, which apparently in this movie is only sea creatures. Only sea creatures. It manifests and around in and around the ship. And it's it's not even the scary sea creatures. It's jellyfish. I'm sorry. Have you seen a great white? Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, the giant squid one was legit, but no, we, giant also, squid, yeah. we also never saw it on screen. Yeah, we you never know, saw it. You know, which is weird we because I suffered through this movie in the theater back when it came out. Mm-hmm. And, for, and like when you're like, we're going to do Sphere. The second thing that occurred to me after the, like, ah, oh, for the love of uh, was um, <laughs> I remembered, like, a scene of a porthole and, like, a giant, you know, like, squid tentacle uh, yeah, going yeah, across. Yeah, yeah, That didn't actually happen. So Is the that- movie, like... The way it's working on the it's people. It's manifesting in your mind. Yes, it's manifesting <laughs> That's right. in the mind of the viewer. That's right. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. There might have been a tentacle in the in the trailer. Oh maybe yeah, maybe that was there a might have scene because I did watch the trailer before I chose this. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why I'm the thinking. Tra- I have a. It, <laughs> the yeah, I will have to watch very this. very misleading. I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah. Yeah. Why, yeah is, maybe what, it's a cut scene. What's you the know? movie that the trailer sells? I mean, you you believe there's going to be monsters. Okay. Yeah. They're going to go down to the bottom of the ocean, and they're going to find monsters. Aliens, but like mon- creatures, yeah. Right. You think there's going to be creatures. It, it seems very... It seems like maybe that's abyssy. why I went to see it. It seems very abyssy. <laughs> what a deep rising. Oh, deep rising. That was like yeah. right around this area, yeah. too. Yeah. Right? And virus. Jamie Lee Curtis oh, on the ship. Virus. Oh, yeah. shit. That I one. have that. Yeah. <laughs> Both of these probably would have been better choice. Okay. Yeah. So... Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the so basically what what's happening here is uh, Dustin Hoffman is a psychiatrist who's partnered up with a mathematician, a biologist, and a physicist. Right. They're all chosen because Hoffman wrote this uh, thing for the government about what to do if you first contact you know for the first contact situation for an extraterrestrial. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. the Navy has found one at the bottom of the ocean, they get Hoffman and his crew and send them down to basically Deep Star Six. Deep core, right? uh, Whatever we're calling it, a habitat. I think that's what they call it on the ocean floor, uh, which is parked right outside of the alien ship, which is buried under coral, right? Okay, so we got to solve the mystery of like, should we go on the alien ship? This is the first thing that they have to deal with. And there's a lot of like, uh, like, did you actually think that they were doing all this stuff for real in the movie, like the underwater sequences and the breathing helmets and all that stuff? Or do you think this was uh, stunt people or miniature work or they're actually? Um, It looked pretty good. Yeah, I know they they did film a lot in um, in like jellyfish exhibits and that sort of thing. In an enclosed environment. Oh, really? They did do a lot of that, yeah. I feel like that's maybe why it holds up. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. because a lot of it is practical stuff like that. They did a lot of it on a soundstage, but they did a lot of it in actual habitats. Well, it felt to me like uh, they were trying to one-up the Abyss, right? The Abyss was famous, I think, for uh, James Cameron actually built a set and then, like, flooded in an old, um, like, nuclear turbine that Mm -hmm. was just used. And so his actors were underwater. Mm-hmm. Obviously not when they're in the habitat. That's mm-hmm. a set somewhere else. But right. whenever they're in water, it's actually like the actors in diving suits, yeah. you know, doing all this stuff. And I kind of got the impression from this movie that the same kind of thing was going on. Yeah, it was. Know. seemed like it. It yeah. was, for sure. Yeah, they, he did the same kind of concept with, with a soundstage um, with putting them in actual water. And then, like I said, filming separately outside and in an actual habitat somewhere like a sea world kind of place, some sort mm-hmm. of like, um, mm-hmm. uh, research lab, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, they specifically didn't want to do actual ocean walks or anything because then they were creeping up on water world territory and the budget would have been astronomical. Mm-hmm. But you imagine like lighting underwater alone. You yeah. Know, like yeah. that alone. Yeah, you got to do it yeah. in a controlled, somewhat of yeah. a controlled environment. Yes. There's still safety. I mean, issues exactly. I assume anytime you yeah. have, uh, Actors doing free uh, free swims like yeah. that far down, and, and the budget know. for this was already eighty million in ninety eight. Eighty million dollars. Somebody gave them eighty million dollars. Yeah. So this was intended to be like a big summer tent pole or something. Yeah. It was, but well, it came out in February. <laughs> it what? was intended for Christmas. Remember? It, no, yeah, no. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, they backed it off. They backed it. They it, like I said, it came out February thirteenth, two uh, nineteen ninety eight. So this is the twenty and twenty year anniversary. I'll tell you something else I found off of Wikipedia. Not that I know anything else about this movie. Yeah. Uh, but they said that somehow there was a production delay with mm-hmm. it. And in that period of time, Barry Levinson and Dustin Hoffman went off and shot the entire movie of Wag the Dog. Yes, they and did. And then came back and filmed the rest of this. They're efficient. Yes, they did. Well, it that, also would explain yeah. a great many things about the disjointed nature of this movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I really, aside from like the 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 way the effects like hold up over time. I thought I really liked their like underwater suit design. Mm -hmm. I thought it like was practical, but without the ridiculous embellishments you see in a lot of movies. And I really liked like the headlamp design. Oh yeah. I thought that was really nice. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the design and the style of this movie, there's not really anything that I have a lot of complaints about. Yeah. For the most part, like I really, I thought it was fine. Even Mm -hmm. now, 20 years later, I thought Mm -hmm. it was okay. Yeah. It doesn't look like old technology when you watch it now. It looks, I don't know. Like it, 
I don't know if it looked futuristic at the time when this movie came out, but it, I mean, it holds up. So. You know, one of, one of the things that it, I mean, this could be because in, in the 90s or in the late 90s, computers were more um, integral to, to just communities in general. But I liked that the things on their, on their, um, like their dash, their their computer screens in there. It everything looked like it had a purpose. Mm-hmm. It didn't look like they had just like miscellaneous buttons and lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It looked like things actually did something. Yes. Not like a Star Trek, uh, you know, old right. Star Trek, the blinking lights on. Right, the- like on this, like obviously the content on the screens mm-hmm. sometimes it looked a little dated, but everything else it looked like it had an actual purpose. Yeah. I, th- I think it looked better than um, when we watched the Arrival and like we saw the. I computer. think so too. The Charlie yeah. Sheen. Yeah, one, Charlie the, Sheen. Yeah. yeah, the Charlie Sheen. Yeah, the, the Arrival. Yes, the <laughs> Arrival. Yeah. Um, I think it looked better than the computers looked in that mm-hmm. movie. I mean, I think this movie's got like three years on that one or something like that. I think two so. or three years yeah. on that. But even still in technology time, like there's a huge gap between huge gap. how this yeah. movie looks and how that one looks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, in the uh, the alien ship, which there's a scene early on where the Sam Jackson character says something like, you know, has anyone actually thought of, should we open this door, mm-hmm. you know, to go into the ship and explore? And this is always like, you know, one of these uh, moments where it's like, well, if you don't open the door, you don't really have a movie. Yeah, right. But it turns out, this is one thing, because, you know, I mean, you take life lessons from movies, folks. I mean, you watch these things and you absorb the lessons that you learn. If I've learned anything, it's like, don't just, you, don't open the door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you just go like, nope, I'm walking away. Don't go in the basement. Don't yeah. say who's there when you hear a weird noise in your house, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Just <laughs> say no. Don't split up. Right, yeah. yeah what is it um, the uh the guy says in uh, Walk the Line, he says, don't touch it. Don't think about touching it. Yeah. Don't sing about thinking about touching it. Yeah. Don't touch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Of course, that makes you want to, you know. Yeah, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> so you just got to tamp down that urge. Uh, so the interior of the ship, let's talk about this a little bit. Because this, I guess when I saw this, this was not what I expected an alien ship to look like. No. No. There's a reason for this in the plot, but, uh, you know, so it's an alien ship and they go inside and it's like, it's got walkways and catwalks and all the, and of course they're talking about this in the movie. Like, Ooh, look at the trusses that they used up there. They're fantastic, you know, Mm -hmm. steel trusses, you know, whatever futuristic uh, metal that they're using. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, this is like the world's most boring alien ship because it looks like the Nostromo. Yeah, it really does. Or something, you know? Le- they, less then, interesting than that, even probably. Well, then, you know, and then we find out kind of why because they well, there's we see the footprints. Well, and we get to the trash can. Yeah, they yeah. have a trash can that trash. says trash. Yeah, yeah. and then or is it Barusa, which is Spanish for trash can? I think something like that. I'm going to defer to you on that one. Mm-hmm. It's it's trash in another language. I know okay, that. And another, I know yes, that. Okay, I know that. Sounds good. Yeah. I think it's Spanish. I'm not sure. Unless it was like trash on one hand and can in Spanish, and that would kind of make sense. Trash can. No? You, Otherwise, you say trash, trash. Why would you have trash in English and then can in another language? Well, it's the future, and they're aliens. That's like and we having bath in English and then a room in another language. Yeah. <laughs> you don't do that. that doesn't make we sense. Should do that though, because it might be kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they discover that this isn't actually an alien ship because it has a series of event logs, right? That date all the way into 2043 or 47 what? or something like that. So the ship is actually from the future, ladies and gentlemen, and it has magically transported itself back. Well, it'd be like 400 years, right? From the point. They no, said 300. They said 300. Well, but that was from their current. From 1998. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Even that so, would be like, yeah, yeah. another years. hundred. Yeah. yeah no. So it just appeared in the past on the ocean floor, and then the coral grew grew up around it. So I did kind of like that there were touch screen. It was like a clear glass uh, screen with the the touch thing. So they were anticipating that in 1998. Good job. Okay, that was one of my favorite things about this movie is because one of my favorite things about Prometheus is that the user interface and user experience design of like the the HUDs of like the controls on their spaceship are really well designed in in. Um, Prometheus. I feel like that's where all the love in that movie went. Was like mm-hmm. into like the the technology yeah, that people they sat down and really thought about. And that. they literally yeah. do the same thing in Prometheus that they do in this movie, where they like slide the glass panel over, you mm-hmm. know, the invisible panel, and they start mm-hmm. like you know turning the dials and like pulling the yeah. And I I was 
f- kind of floored to see that same idea in a movie 20 years and ago. And it had yeah. the uh, holographic representation of the universe. Yeah. Or whatever. The yeah, event and, log. And like I said, that part, it didn't throw me. I wasn't like, oh, God, this is so cheesy because it looks so terrible. It didn't look that bad. No, Ridley Scott's still doing that now in movies yeah. he makes, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, it looked solid. Well, I was like... I mean, I was intrigued at this point in the movie, even rewatching it tonight, knowing the disastrous experience that I had in the theater in 1998. I was like, I'm going to give this movie another shot. Yeah. And at this point, I'm like, this isn't so bad. Like, I'm actually intrigued about what's going on here because yeah. I don't remember this. And it's like, oh, I mean, I remember eventually there's a sphere, but I don't remember where it was. It seemed like it was on an alien ship, but. It's not an alien ship. It's from the future. It's actually a human ship from the future, but all the crew are dead and mummified. And in the cargo hold, they have, dun, 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 a giant sphere. (laughs) Yep. A big gold sphere. There is a literal sphere in this movie. Literal. A perfect sphere, we're told by the mathematician or the physicist. I'm not entirely sure who. Uh, but it has like, uh, what does it have? Well, they describe it as like a liquid mercury or something like that. It's, it has, yeah, the, it the looks surface like, is moving. Yeah. It looks like it's, it's moving. Mm-hmm. It but looks like, like a it, gold. Color. It looks like what you would see if you look at bacteria under a microscope, how like it looks like it's moving, but it's just kind of like ripply. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. The like. surface of it is like rippling yeah. while it's staying stationary. Yeah. Yeah. And after discovering this sphere, everybody goes back to the main uh, habitat to go take a nap. Because, much like the abyss, a storm is moving in on the surface. Mm. And uh, their umbilical is going to have to be detached or whatever. They have to uh, abandon ship and basically go up to the surface. Uh, Otherwise, they're going to miss their ride. And they're going to be cut off here down on the bottom of the ocean floor. Sure. That happens, of course, because one of the characters decides to go stick his face into the sphere. I mean, I I would. <laughs> well, that's what it's there for, right? It's like I, I mean, you're not gonna sp- you're not gonna not touch it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> if it's next door and you're sleeping, you're like, I can't sleep. I gotta go over and there's uh, this big giant gold ball. You don't know what it does. Mm-hmm. You don't know anything about it. You're gonna go play with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You're so gonna. Sam Jackson heads over there. Like what? I can't see my own face. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. because everything was reflected in it except for them. Which is how Dustin Hoffman, being the fucking genius that he is, oh god, I fucking hated that line because he's like, I'm a little, he's like, I'm a little alarmed that I, being the only non-scientist, has noticed this. <laughs> yeah, but it's reflecting it's everything. It's reflecting in the room. everything but us. But us. <laughs> like, okay, you son of a bitch. Yeah. It'd be a cocky motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I'm the only non-scientist. Okay. Yeah. Well, this movie's populated by a bunch of cocky motherfuckers. It is. It's something. It's like everybody's trying to one up each yeah. other. How old were you when you got your first PhD? Seventeen. Oh, one year before me. <laughs> this was a fucking dick measuring God. contest for like a good twenty minutes of this movie. Right? It's pretty obnoxious. Like, I got it. You were a Doogie Hauser. I got it. But like, they're all competing in different fields of science. So who fucking cares? Exactly. You know that's why it's exactly. so stupid about it. Is like you're comparing fucking apples and oranges, right? assholes. Like it's not the same no. thing. Well, but I just you know maybe I'm just getting tired of it. It seems like it's <laughs> it seems like it's lazy writing in movies. Yeah. Where all the characters. Yes. Like you're creating, the writer is creating conflict among characters where like it doesn't necessarily need to be there. No, every conflict in this movie felt so fucking forced. Mm -hmm. Every single one. Why can't the conflict just be you're living in close proximity with other people? That's annoying in itself. Yeah, Yeah, but that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to say that because they're so close together, they're getting on each other's nerves. But even that, it's like. There's a better way to do that. Yeah, and they just got there. Like yeah. they've been there for like a day and they're like competing with each other. They're just terrible people. They are yeah. terrible people. I think that's what it comes down. I mean, they're not like, you know, bunch of bastards, all of them. The way you show that conflict in a better way is instead of a fucking dick measuring contest about PhDs and bullshit is like you have someone that's like like shaking their foot or like tapping their finger a bunch. You have another Smacking character go, gum. can you stop? Yeah, like that's exactly. how you show that, you like, know, mm-hmm. because Popping that is legitimately annoying. Constantly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You have yeah. something like that. And then that's that one scene is yeah. all you need to show of like, everyone's getting on each other's nerves. Like, boom. It's, yeah. Exactly. Shorter way to get to the same fucking point. You Instead know? of, Oh, he discovered it first to be like, can you just not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's what yeah. you need. That, yeah. that is realistic. Well, we yeah. did have that because uh, Sam Jackson was humming. And uh, Leah Schreiber like shut him down. 
So this is that exact same thing. So, it's like, oh, so you're annoying me by humming. Going. Yeah, but yeah. they do it over and over and <laughs> yeah, over again. Yeah. Because we are supposed to feel the emotional stress of these people being locked in this tight, confined space together. Yeah. But, but it's I like, can't why? relate to a PhD contest. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. that's not relatable. No. Like, yeah. And especially, and oh, ooh, ooh. especially when they got started with the bullshit, the bullshit about her past mental instability. Sharon Stone. Sharon this Stone's. becomes like the, this is this her is like character story. This is the focal story. point, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, I get why they did it. I'm, st- I'm saying this is still, like, really weak, right? No, I, I but know, yeah. the only thing that seems to define her character, because like, if there was a point where I was like, shit, does Sharon Stone have anything to do with yeah, this why movie? is she there? Yeah. Right. But what's defined about her is that uh, Dustin Hoffman's a shrink, so he had treated her at one point and right. possibly had an affair with her while he was married, and so he feels guilty about that. But she uh, tried to kill herself by taking a bunch of prescription drugs. This is hit over the head, on the nose, on the nail. All of the all all of the above. <laughs> well, what I'm correct. doing there, I think, is what the movie does. You yep. just try to hit like, in the face. Any the, any way it. they can tell you, they're going to tell you. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is to set up a you know once all the characters start because um, basically trust becomes an issue, right? It always seems to in these type of uh, mm-hmm. stories that we can, we don't know who we can trust because everybody's got something in their past that uh, you know makes them untrustworthy i guess to the audience and to the characters and so that's hers maybe she's crazy they, that was it was funny to me how fast they jumped to that peter coyote he's like she's crazy what are you talking about you brought a person down here and tried to kill herself 10 years ago she's crazy she's a nut job go off and kill us all it's just it's just so fucking obvious how clueless people were about mental health in 1998 mm-hmm. 20 years ago yeah, because she, yeah, she no. barely sets foot in in this in the ship, and they're like, "Barely, how could you? Yeah, how mm-hmm. dare you? Yeah. She was depressed thirteen years ago. Yeah, you she son has of a bitch. clinical depression, and they're treating it like she fucking murdered someone. Yeah. She you know, pops, like she pops a Xanax once in a while, and she's gonna take down the whole ship. Well, yeah. pops a Xanax once in a while, or you that's know, what, her that's words. what she her says. Words. Yeah, <laughs> her uh, words. but she still she does seem to know a lot about pharmacology. I'll give you that. In the, well, wasn't the she where, like a Bi- biochemist or yeah. something, yeah. right? But it's the I, all I hear in those scenes are the writer. I hear I hear Crichton using medical speak, throwing on his twenty dollar words, yeah, yeah. and sciencing <laughs> the shit out of this. It's like, oh, I know that what phen- phenobarbital and uh, whatever dexatrim yeah. and you know uh, <laughs> all these do and what dosage and uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's her character. Hoffman's is he's the shrink, so that means that he is going to keep his uh, intellectual distance and cool, and so therefore and we can gonna... trust him as the center point of what's you know. And we and can he's... trust him to be a reliable narrator, right? No one else is. <laughs> and we can point. trust him to counsel everybody. Yep. Jackson's character Did... goes into the sphere, so we can't trust him anymore because nope. he starts acting weird. Basically, yeah. he just acts like a happy guy after that and Did doesn't we... answer questions. When Did you they ask. ever establish why he wrote that paper about alien interaction? Because he was asked to as an expert in psychology. Right. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. All right. Uh huh. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> but I think he may have plagiarized some of it. No, he was just saying it was all bullshit. He basically stole from Isaac Asimov. Well, yeah, it's all Sirley, bullshit. Has he met an alien? Writers. No. Yeah. yeah. So, well, so, so how do you know? If, so what, it's all what, hypothetical. Do, yeah. yeah. It's like, so what, yeah, why stole, isn't that as valid as coming up with He something? stole from the most notable sci-fi writers ever. So like he was l- really banking on no one double checking that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Because how are you going to double check it? You're never actually going to meet an alien. Oh, shit. Yeah. What if one crashes on the bottom of the ocean floor and you're called up and have to deal with it? Yeah. What's yeah. Uh, Schreiber's um He's a foible? physicist. He's a physicist. Character flaw. He is cocky, uh, I guess. He hates coming in second. He's damn super, it. Super God nerdy. damn it. Because I'm trying to even think what leads to his downfall. But. His superpower is he can get hit in the head as many times yeah, as you want. And apparently hit, it never phases yeah, him. Dude, yeah. He had to have like a serious concussion. He was bleeding concussion. the first time he got hit in oh, the yeah. head. He and had he a still massive kept going. contusion. Yeah. Concussions, contusions, all of the C's. Yeah. All of I them. Think he got hit like three times the head in, mm-hmm. in, uh, in that one scene, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and like, kept going. Complow. Yeah. Complow. Complow. <laughs> and then one finally did him in, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what uh, eventually deaths start to happen. This is all brought about after uh, Jackson goes into the sphere. 
Yeah. What he encounters there, we don't know. And the visual effect of him encountering the sphere is the weirdest thing in the world. He like floats into it. Like his reflection appears in it. And like that was a really bad effect, I thought, actually. Into it. <laughs> it's weird. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like he's yeah. been wrapped around a bowling ball. Yeah, basically. Fantastic. Yeah. We don't know what's actually in the sphere. That was just it. And then what's he, in the sphere, Colin? What's in the sphere? What's in the sphere? What's in the sphere? <laughs> Uh, so the weird things that start happening is uh, Queen Latifah encounters a school. Oh yeah, of... Queen Latifah's there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pops up and she walks in as quickly as she walks out of this movie. Uh-huh, God damn. Uh-huh, uh-huh. She's like manning, she's like manning the monitors for like a half a second. Yeah. What was her big movie back then? What was the more if she was like a bank robber? Mad Money. Mad Money. Mad yep. Money. That was, was that, that was one? later. That was later. Oh, yeah. That was later. It was her and Katie Holmes she and was, Diane Keaton. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't she in um like set it off or something? Or like she was in Bringing Down the House. Bring down the and house. Just Right. And Last Holiday. Got, why do holiday? I know this many Queen, Queen Latifah, Latifah fan yeah. over here? <laughs> I Holy smokes. I don't know why I know that many. I haven't seen any of those movies. <laughs> All I gotta say is she's... Uh, so that's what you were telling us right now. <laughs> All I gotta say is you. she rocks in Chicago. Okay. I love that movie. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. She's great in that. Oh, that's right. I yeah, love she that. was in that. Yeah, she's mama. Yep. I love that mm-hmm. movie. Well, she gets stung to death and drowned both at the same time by death a massive school. by jellyfish. In a yes. scene that is shot so poorly. So bad. That we, Holly and I had to ask Colin what just happened yeah. because we could not follow. She's just flailing around in a, in a swarm of jellyfish and you, and then all of a sudden she's but just But like floating. it shows like, like her feet and then yeah. it shows like her mask and then it shows like her hand. It, the way it's cut is just not. Like you see bubbles, but you can't, like you cannot tell what's happening at all. Mm-hmm. And it keeps cutting back to the control room where they're like, can you hear me? Yeah. You know, I don't think the microphones work in this entire And they're watching her. They're like, it's fine. They won't hurt you. Like, it's fine. But like, she's like screaming and like They're sticking me. They're sticking me through the suit. It's very unclear. Are we to believe that she like manifested those jellyfish because she's afraid of them? No, that was... Dustin Hoffman? Because if you recall... uh, Spoilers, Mm -hmm. listeners. Okay, no, no. So uh, No, not spoilers. We're telling you the whole goddamn movie. So basically... Right, so now we're going through it and trying to unpack what's actually going on. So Dustin Hoffman goes to rescue uh, Samuel Jackson, right? Right. And in doing so, he stares into the sphere and Mm -hmm. his reflection appears. And then we as the audience forget that this happens, which is the big like Jedi mind trick that the movie pulls on. I didn't forget. Okay, you didn't? Did you remember <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, honestly, I don't like, I just so watched this movie confusing. and I don't remember yeah. half of it, you know? Like, yeah. so, I, no, I don't remember it, but I also don't remember half of what happened in this movie. Okay. So, I agree with that. I don't remember yeah. half yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. But I did remember him, him seeing his reflection oh, okay. in, the, in the sphere. Yeah, I had forgotten that when I saw it in the theater. Yeah. So this time around, I'm like, oh, oh, okay, this is what's going on the whole way through. Because for a while, I was like, why is this not coming back into play? And then later on, I was like, well, it's about fucking time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's the key moment, uh, viewer, if you're watching Sphere for the first time. Dustin Hoffman does go into the Sphere and doesn't remember it. Mm. And the mm-hmm. Sphere's power yeah. is to make you dream. Basically, you can make your dreams come true. And but only your nightmares, alleged, apparently. Only the things you're afraid of yeah. and if they're under sea creatures. So it's a very narrow window. Well, because he's yeah. afraid of jellyfish. When they find the jellyfish, he makes some statement of like, oh, you know, jellyfish. I remember when I was a kid, I jumped off of a dock and landed in a, in a pool of them. Right. And he's so not, that's why she saw the jellyfish. But he wasn't dreaming. I know. It but just the, makes your subconscious. And the Chekhov setup, if we're following Chekhov's rules, is when they first go down there, they have a whole monologue about sea snakes. And I know it pays off later on, but pays off, you know, whatever <laughs> in heavy air quotes pays off. Yeah. But like she says that to him yep. and he seems like freaked out by that. Yep. So yep. that logically should be what he brings about. Yeah. Well, he does that too, I suppose, <gasps> right? And Stupid. He also, but the only thing I can tell that Sam Jackson manifests is uh, because he's a big fan of uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The giant squid. Well, I guess he manifests the book several hundred times over yeah. in an amazing scene where there's a whole cabinet full of books. He's like, don't open that, Dustin Hoffman. And he does. And a bunch of books fall out. Now yeah. all 20,000 leagues under the sea. It's a nightmare. There's a, a straight up horror scene. sequence of him opening cabinets full of books. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's even cut dramatically. There's like oh, yeah. tense music. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. it is horrifying that he, there's thousands of copies of this book yep but all of them only have 87 pages because that was as far as sam jackson's ever gotten the book he was too scared to go past the squid Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
Genius. <laughs> okay, that's not a horrible idea, but it's maybe executed uh, not yes. terribly mm-hmm. well. Because we're saying there's some kind of problem with either the editing, the photography, the structure of the screenplay, or something where All ideas are just not uh, conveyed. And some of this seems to be because they are trying to keep, you know, there's a central mystery that they're trying to obscure from the viewer. So all of yeah. a sudden there'll be the big saw like moment yeah. of dun 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 dun. Like you remember he was looking in the sphere. This is actually his nightmares, not Samuel Jackson. They clearly want every scene to end like with you keeping you guessing, but it's just not. You can't do that that many off. times. It's though. just not pulled off. It just yeah. makes the movie fucking confusing and annoying yeah yeah Yeah. like the the part when i first was like there's no hope for the editing in this movie there's no turning back is after queen latifah is killed and they're like examining her body and pulling the jellyfish off her face yep sharon stone says like oh these aren't god's creatures like basically saying like these didn't come from earth yeah and it sounds like she's going to explain her thought behind that and like there'll be another line Nope. Cut to another scene. She yeah. says, these aren't God's creatures. Mm-hmm. And like, it's like, no, no. Why would you think that? Yeah, no, fuck yeah. you. They're jellyfish. They are. Like, yeah. what's your point? Yeah. 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 See, me watching it on the second viewing was like, well, okay, I get it. It's because he invented them and they're dream creatures. Yeah. But the and first I, time through, it. they are not giving you enough information. And I get it. They do say that it's not possible for jellyfish to be that l- yeah. that deep in the in the ocean. Mm-hmm. But it does. Clearly. But they're, they're banking on you remembering yeah. that. Like, they're yeah. banking and you remembering that from all the other the, the huge info dump they yeah. gave you at the beginning. Like, like Colin, you said at one point in time we were watching this movie, there was a huge long monologue rattling off all this scientific information. And you're like, all right, now oh, remember all that. About the yeah. pressure yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was literally an actor as an admiral or something. Uh-huh. Uh, was, not an admiral. Was it Sorry, Peter Coyote? It, I think? No, it was the guy who played uh, agent or director Kirsch on the X-Files. And I don't know what no, his I name is. He took over from Skinner. No, all okay. right. Uh, but he's basically explaining to the uh, the crew before they go down and to the audience, mm-hmm. like, this is what happens with pressure sickness. If you go down underwater, you cannot come back up quickly. Otherwise, you will decompress and explode. And that's bad. And I'm mm-hmm. like sitting there going like, well, clearly this is going to come into play yeah. in the third act of this movie. If you were taking bets right now, how many acts are in this movie? Though it feels like like seven. (laughs) I I read something that they added the whole decompression thing because audiences didn't believe that you could come back up that quickly without having to go through some sort of like therapeutic decompression type situation. Because you can't, right? If you're down that. No, you can't. You can't. But but like that's why they added like his exposition and then the whole thing at the end, like. Ooh, we'll, get that that. Scene, oh, we'll get to that end scene, but oh, we'll get to that fucking end scenes in the mm. whole goddamn movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that yeah. goddamn ending. The seething rage here. Yeah. It's palpable <laughs> in the room right now. I'm, I, I, I don't know. Like we'll get to it, but the end was just so ridiculous. I don't know if I. I think I was delirious at that point. It just made me giddy. <laughs> I was just giggling. <laughs> Because at some point you just quit and giving up think, all yeah, like no, resistance. Stop fighting it. Because yeah, yeah. it wasn't just good. let it wash over you. Because yeah. it wasn't good, but I was like, oh, it's delightful. It's just so it's so silly. <laughs> well, what's okay? Well, what what's the high points of the second act? We've got a talking computer Axe. named Jerry. What are you talking about? Oh Axe? my god, I, was, I don't know. Oh, Jerry. Jerry. Okay. See, Jerry. so much stuff in this movie happened that for a hot <laughs> minute there, I forgot about Jerry. Yeah. And you know, Jerry speaks in haikus to start. Like he has, Wait, who is Jerry? Jerry is, is uh, the alien that is speaking to them through AOL Instant Messenger. <laughs> yes, he is, he is literally instant messaging him, and they're instant messaging back. Um, and the first couple times he talks to them, he literally speaks in three line haikus. Mm-hmm. And it is, Hello, yeah, I am how Jerry. are you? Yeah. I, I am, am Jerry. happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am happy. Oh no, Dustin Hoffman in tones and sinister, you know, like for What happens when Jerry gets angry? Dun dun dun. Oh. Jerry's getting face. upset. His face, Dustin Hoffman's face when he says that, like, I just want to punch him. Yeah. I just, I can't. Uh, I can't. Well, and like what, Jerry starts getting jealous, which is, uh, you know, because like the, Dustin Hoffman has that whole like conversation with him about like, well, our entities need private time. And I was like, oh, I don't like the tone of this conversation <laughs> is really gross it, for some reason. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's like he was having a therapy session with a child. Yeah. It, it seemed yeah. like it almost seemed like. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the best way to put it. Therapy session yeah. with a child, yeah. yeah. And and clearly, Jerry took offense to being talked to that way. Jerry's getting upset. Yeah. Jerry's getting upset. And when Jerry gets upset, 
<laughs> Apparently, <laughs> Jerry manifests giant squids. That Jerry, would be cool to see in this Jerry's movie. Jerry's angry. You wouldn't yep. like him when he's angry. Well, we would like to see the angriness, yep. Jerry. Yeah. We want to see it. I mean, it's done as a suspenseful sequence where on the radar they see the giant squid coming down and it's huge, but we never actually see the giant squid. No, we fucking nope. don't. We you don't see, see the a outline lot of movie. it on the radar. One of the That's characters uh, wanders off and is apparently murdered by the giant squid. Oh, the the chick in the kitchen uh, that we've seen one out time. There to see if kitchen it, girl. Like, yeah. yeah, kitchen girl. Muffins. She had muffins. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know. That's I right. Like, I don't think she, she even talked. I don't remember her. Like I remember one shot with her in it. Mm-hmm. Carrying the plate of muffins. <laughs> I think it was like on a monitor. So yeah, I don't know. I've, yeah. I like just saw this movie. I've wiped her from my mind already. Um, but yeah, she's her body's discovered outside the ship, and it's all busted up. Yeah, because they hear like thumping or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the eggs start dropping from uh, above, and yeah, okay. Well, but it takes neither. a long time for you to know it's like. I mean, you can kind of tell by like yeah. the size of them, their eggs, but the amount of them is insane. The they're everywhere. Do that is they're like coming down on you. They like drop thousands they of shoot. eggs just shooting yeah. everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's yeah, just part of the attack. I it, thought they were it is like raining eggs. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was uh, like ink. Right? They squirt. Don't they? Is it one of my things? That's of? um, Ooh, that's octopus, squid. isn't it? It's octopus. I think squid's ink too. Oh no, it is squid. It's squid ink. Yeah, right. But like, but, like literally, like it seemed like the whole ocean floor was covered in these fucking eggs. I think they like, do. Though. I think I think when they when they lay their eggs, I think they like shoot them out. Yeah, into like a designated yeah. area, probably. I would imagine, right? The like, landing zone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and they're like, "Oh no, we're being showered." If you're with a marine eggs. biologist and you know about how squids lay eggs, please write us and tell no, us. No, please, yeah, <laughs> like, well, yeah, educate us. Yeah, and then Jerry turns homicidal. I'm going to kill you all. Maybe Jerry isn't the alien, but maybe it's actually Harry, the biologist. Like, I didn't understand any of this while it was happening. Like, no, okay, because he's like, "Stop calling me Jerry. That's not my name." Mm-hmm. And then, fucking- but Dustin Hoffman. Oh my god, that 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 was so frustrating. He, he kept saying, "Stop calling me Jerry," and Dustin Hoffman kept going, "Okay, Jerry, what do you want me to call you then? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry." He just say, "You're a therapist. What do you want me to call you? Yeah, you are a therapist, <laughs> and you can't you listen. Know better. Yeah. Oh God, there was Ugh. such an easy way around that, and he missed it. Yeah, my therapist." would never do that. <laughs> never. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, everybody else seems to end up dead. Peter Coyote gets cut in half by a door in a scene which is shot <sighs> and edited again it. so incoherently yeah, that we're we like, I think he got cut yeah, in half by the, the door. The door clamps down and he gets caught and he's like, ah, oh, trying to struggle. And then it switches to the like the little thing that says like, what, I don't even remember. What is the, it? The, the door lock. closed lock? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the lock? Yeah. So like, but like the only you way see you can his... be locking is there's no obstruction. It must have cut him in half. Like you but see if... his feet, and then you see his like his torso, and you see the like airlock thing. Yeah. And yeah. It's like okay, I all guess. Right. Yeah. Like, well, I the, mean... lis- the listener at home is probably wondering like, what the hell are you talking about? All these people dying. Is the alien going around killing people? No, it's no. actually like a because they're in. A, I think it's part and parcel with these movies, right? There has to be the disaster sequence where things go from bad to worse, and everything starts breaking. Water spraying out of places, pressure valves are busted and they're not adjusted right, and somebody throws the wrong switch and you know, right? The the mm-hmm. well, I think they they think that the squid's crushing yeah. them, but bolts are popping out of the you the know the fire bulkheads breaks out and, and, oh yeah the fire yeah Should've, I forgot about the fire there's a fire well that and doesn't every fire movie kills, like this uh, have like a scene where you're desperately trying to get the airlock shut in time while something's coming, right? Yeah. Like every movie has that. Like Deep Blue Sea has that. Dude, Titanic has that. Uh (laughs) The Force Awakens has that. Yeah. Like every movie has that. And this movie does not have that. I think uh, The Abyss had the The one where the guy's, uh, the ring stops, the titanium ring stops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So everything goes to hell and back until everybody's dead except for our three highest paid lead actors yep, who have to solve the mystery of what the fuck is going on here. And how do they come to the idea that they're dreaming and having their dreams come? Well, Dustin Hoffman doesn't well, he, think it's him. Well, first he decodes that its name isn't Jerry, it's Harry. Yep. And then he realizes that it's Samuel L. Jackson. And there's that terrifying moment with the books where he discovers, like, oh, my God. Here, you dropped your book. You're reading your book. You know what that means. There's more than one book. And it's like not real. That's not terrifying, though. Like, but the music and the angles and him going. It's like it's one of those mo- moments where the editor is trying to do the uh, 
how do you underscore that this is a tense moment? You yeah. cut to like six different camera angles. You know, it's like, here's yeah. his profile and here's head on and here's him from above and here's him from below. And like the shocked look at his face. And it's just, uh, it's awful, it's awful, awful filmmaking. It's awful. Mm-hmm. You cannot believe in these moments that like an A-list director is doing this movie. No. Let us not forget the other important book in this movie. Sharon Stone had a very important journal she was keeping. Oh, a very um, important journal. Called Eggs and Spheres. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> doodling in her little notebook, drawing a sphere, and then next to it, drawing an egg. And, and labeling sphere, both of them. Uh-huh. And then an egg. Like seven times on one page. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because an egg is a sphere. That's Whoa. Right. Looking at Whoa. The, That's right. They're talking about like an egg on a, on a griddle. Yeah. You know, some, like a broken open egg. Yeah. yeah. Not the Wow. Sphere. <sighs> Mind-blowing. I think she writes under that, like, egg- yeah. Equals sphere. Yeah. yeah. Equals egg. Equals sphere or something. It's repeat. It's she has like seven drawings on one page of an yeah. egg and a sphere. Yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. She's drawing yeah. it over and over again. Yep. This there's a nice close-up Harry shot of her drawing them. He keeps on saying like, "I love eggs. I love eggs. Love eggs." She's like, "Hmm, eggs, spheres. Spheres. Yeah. Eggs. Eggs. Sphere. Oh yeah. This is the level that this movie. No, working this is out. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, if you think we're we like, they're not drawings; they're they're fucking notebook doodles. Like it is yeah. literally just a circle with another circle. What do you yeah. expect, Michaela? She's a scientist. This is how they communicate. They I draw. mean, scientists have to sketch stuff sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they you know? do. They <laughs> you do. know how else can you communicate an idea to another scientist <laughs> in sketches? <laughs> <laughs> That's an exasperated sigh. I mean, that's not a thought she could just keep in her brain. She had to write it down, you know? Yeah. Atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I got to document this because yeah. this will be important later. All right. So this brings us to, well, they eventually discover that uh, the big uh, dun, dun, dun moment is that Dustin Hoffman has forgotten that he's been in the sphere. So our reliable narrator is now, oh, my God, you're the one who's been causing all the giant squids and, and sea snakes or whatever to appear but sharon stone has also apparently at some point been in the sphere and doesn't remember we never saw it so it's a very confusing plot point you basically have actors all teary and yelling at each other and you're like i don't even know what you're upset about or what's going on in this scene and you're trying really hard to do it i felt really bad for these people but i'm like you people have made poor choices in your life that have led you to this moment where you're on this you felt set. for him? Because I literally felt nothing this whole movie. <laughs> I felt nothing for I anyone at any nothing. point. nothing. <laughs> I was like, devoid of emotion with this movie, yeah. Like, well, at one point, except I, for boredom. Yeah. Is that an emotion? I think it's a lack of emotion. Yeah, mm. that's... No, that's a, hmm. You can feel <laughs> the passage of time. That's the sphere, Colin. Oh, yeah. I would say <laughs> I trapped was... trapped in the sphere. <laughs> Actually... <laughs> I would say I felt annoyance towards the third act of like, is this movie oh, over yet? Yeah, I know. Because yeah. we haven't even got to the third act. No. I was kidding with you guys because I really didn't remember the thing because I'm just like, it's just going to keep going. And but going. you were like, still right. And it was yeah. like, and you know, it's like, so it's like you have this big moment. And you're like, okay, well, this is like the end of the movie, right? There's only three of them left. They've discovered what's going on. I'm like, no, nope, this movie's just going to keep going. And here's the third act. And sure enough, it keeps going. That was, the, this is the beginning of the third act. And we're like, oh. So what's going on in the third act? What's our primary conflict? They're trying conflict? to get out. Because? Oh, because they're is, the only ones left. I, is this is this before or after the, she sets the bomb? Because of the bomb. Okay, yeah. Okay. She's, right. She set a bomb in her like crazy state. Yeah. In the crazy euphoria of sphere-induced madness. Sea madness. She, she sets a bomb outside it <laughs> because she's going to try and blow up the sphere. I yeah. assume, but she's we're not going to be outside the blast radius. It's one of those. So we have to get in the the submersible, whatever the the little yeah. little escape sub. Yeah, and then some kind of crazy time warp shit happens there. Yeah, because they're stuck in the sphere. So, God. No, you got to explain this to us. I know. I'm cause... sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're trying to get to the escape submarine, and every time they turn. They're nowhere near the submarine. Like they think they've gotten there, and then they realize that they're in the spaceship. And then they try to get out. They turn. They realize that the elevator is now a corridor. And they just keep they, that keeps going over and over. They they can't actually get to the submarine. All along, they're actually in the submarine, hallucinating. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with a movie that employs this technique is. I mean, I guess you can do it right, and I think I have, so nothing's coming immediately to mind. I probably will in a minute. 
but you know, we're, we're an illustration where it's done correctly. But the danger that you run as a filmmaker in doing this kind of stuff is that you are dis you're intentionally trying to disorient the audience, yeah, who's already disoriented because of the just the pacing, the construction, and the the way that the pace, the way that this movie's cut together. That you're just you're in you're just everybody's fucking lost at this point. Going like I don't know. I assume they're in the sub. Is that a dream, a hallucination? Once they get out of the fourteen oh eight was the one I was thinking. Oh, fourteen oh eight. Yeah. They were gonna like. Yeah. We're in the yeah. sub, and Dustin Hoffman somehow is like, I can't. I we're in the sub. We're not actually in this hallway. We're in the sub. I can't see the button to hit it though to actually engage. And then they would go, and then they get rescued, and then they're in this uh, decompression chamber. And then I was sure. That it was going to pull a 14 away and go like, wait, do you remember? How did we get out of the sub? Yeah. I don't remember. Just, I just remember being in the decompression chamber. Oh, my God. We're still in the sub. That thankfully didn't happen. Yeah. But at this point, it's like you could keep doing that over for 15 yeah. fucking minutes. And, you know, who yeah. cares? Sorry, that was a rant. No. Yeah. I feel like the only time that this was successful was Inception. Uh, yeah, I feel like that is the most successful situation where that yeah. I was actually it sets up rules and sticks yeah, with them. Exactly. Yeah, it sets up rules. It, it is not condescending in the way no. it explains those rules. It, it engages um, you. It keeps you with it. This I was like, you know what? Just fucking die. <laughs> Even let the bomb go off. I'm done. I'm so done. Even like the like. Okay, I people like certain Christopher Nolan movies. I know people are like, oh, I didn't get it. And like, if you didn't get it, you're stupid. Is how they think those movies talk to them. Nah, watch this movie and see how you feel. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Christopher Nolan lays it out as much as he possibly can without giving away the third act of the movie. Yeah. I think Interstellar is a good parallel to this movie too, because oh, Interstellar yeah. deals with a lot of oh, yeah. black hole stuff uh -huh. in a much better way than oh, yeah. this movie does. I understood yeah. what yeah. the hell was going on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with that too. Yeah, and I was thinking Inception though too. At certain points, I was like, Inception has done half of these concepts. Better. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you're going like, we're going into layer one of dreams and then layer two and then layer three. But yeah. all of that is explained in Inception mm -hmm. with meticulous detail yeah. and then a couple of trial runs before yeah. you go into the real one where then. And you how can are we going to make it. sure you understand what's happening? It's all going to look different. Mm -hmm. And that's um, how you're going to know. You have Ellen Page as your audience proxy. Yeah. In, 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 in uh, Inception because yeah. she's like never done this before yeah, it's that's her first they have time. To yeah. yeah. And it's to us. Yeah. And it's her. a smooth way of giving your exposition without making it so obvious. And there's no audience proxy in this movie. It's great. Right. There's none. Yeah. Yeah, Ugh. everybody's an expert in their field. There needs to be like an intern or a rookie that's like his first time that they explain all this shit to as like an audience proxy or something, you know? Yeah, because if you don't have an audience proxy, this is as a screenwriter, I'm talking to all you screenwriters out there. Then you end up with lines like, but damn it, man, I'm a biologist. Yep. <laughs> you know? Which means <laughs> nothing to your audience. Your audience doesn't give a shit about that. Uh -huh. yeah. Like, oh, I get it. We're supposed to take this as what you're saying is true because right. you're a quote unquote expert. There's nothing about you that I believe is an expert at anything yeah. except you keep on telling me. I'm an expert. I'm, damn it, man. I'm a psychologist. Yeah. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. Yeah. That's like half of Liev Schreiber's <laughs> lines in this whole movie is like, I'm a physicist. I'm a physicist. Yeah. I got my degree at 17. I've yeah. known him since he was 17. We get it. He was 17. Yep. We got it. And aside from that, playing into these kind of overused stereotypical behaviors, all of them do, I suppose. Yeah. You know, the, he's the... Uh, the nerdy psychologist. So he talks all the time and he's always talking about like calculations and well, you know, yeah, like, mm -hmm. okay. uh, but eventually they do get rescued. They go through the decontamination chamber and they do blow up the, uh, the, the sphere. Well, for whatever the, the sphere, the bomb the ship. goes off, the bomb goes off. Things so this, are, yeah. What brings us to the scene that, that made you giddy. Explain this to me, Holly, because at this point, my soul had died. I don't know. Up Same. Inside mine, mine was dead and like <laughs> like buried and maybe cremated. No, I, I want Michaela's take. The worms take. were eating at it. I want know? Michaela's take because she said it's the Disney ending. Oh, and God. Fuck this. This movie took a hard left turn and not, not in a good way. This movie went from sci-fi, thriller, drama, action movie to after school special and less than an act. They hold hands and make the sphere go away. <laughs> that is they hold they hold hands that, and I'm not joking. To, I'm not exaggerating. That is literally yeah. what happens. They hold they hands and promise to forget. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. promise to forget. After school fucking special this movie turns into. Yeah. They decide they don't want the power. They just want it to go away. So they hold hands and the sphere our last shot of the movie, the fears the sphere flying up in, into space 
disappearing forever. It's the equivalent of the Blood Brother Pact at mm. the end of a coming yeah. of age story. Uh-huh. It's the equivalent. <clears throat> We're just going to all agree. We're going to wish it away. We're going to wish, wish away. away the memory yep, and therefore away. the power to make our dreams what come What if true. we still have this power? We don't deserve this power. Which We're not ready of, for it. Like reduces all the seriousness of what just came before it. If yeah. like if they could have just wished this away earlier, like holy shit, they could have saved a bunch of people's lives. If they yeah. could have just held hands and wished it away. Like if it was that simple the whole time, really? If they have this magic power, why didn't they wish everybody back? Why didn't they wish themselves yeah, back? Yeah, they're in assholes. Time? What you know? Wow. Yep. Yeah, they're dicks. Yeah, experiment with Self-centered that man. Self-centered motherfuckers. And they had a long time to think about it. Well, a longish time, like what, like, yeah. like ten days or something, right? All, like, three. It was three days in the decompression. All they came chamber. up with was, I don't want to have a bad dream and wake up to scary shit in my apartment. Yep. That's it. They, they thought about it. themselves. They couldn't because risk it. Because we have imagination. I'm like, well, that was a pretty, you know, lack of imagination, I thought. On your but part. you could bring yep. back your friends. I can't risk it. Yeah. I'm really scared of snakes. <laughs> can't do it. This is literally a movie that ends with Sam Jackson, Dustin Hoffman, and Sharon Stone holding hands. And a sphere flying away. And that's what made me I, get I, it. That, <laughs> I, I could they, not believe that was happening. I thought they fucked that up, too, because, like, they show them holding hands. Then you see the sphere at the bottom of the ocean. Then the, I think you cut back to them holding hands and wishing really hard. And then the sphere <laughs> takes off, blasts through out of the ocean, and flies into the atmosphere and out into space. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is the end, right? And then they cut back to them in the decompressor or whatever in the in the ship. Yeah. I'm like, what for? You're already done. You no fucked reason. this up. Why'd no you reason. come back here? And then they had to go back out to space yeah. to show the thing. Like, No finally. reason. I'm like, uh, uh, you can't even end your movie right. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope. That movie was might be one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't want to jump ahead and uh, give people... You just heard a preview of our wrap-up segment, which is coming up soon, ladies and gentlemen. But it made me giddy, so you don't know. I might have loved it. I, mean, I, I can understand it. that because it was such a turn yeah, from what we had just, just watched. Like, it just... That gave, it's jarring. It, gave it was me jarring. The giggles. Yeah. It gave me the straight-up giggles. I can understand that this because... This whole movie, I was like, fuck this, fuck this, everyone die! And then all of a sudden, they hold hands and it just... <laughs> they hold hands and wish it away. <laughs> oh my well, God. now you have no idea what's going to happen, <laughs> listener, as we come back from our mailbag segment, uh, which is brought to you by Igor's Budweiser, and uh, and give our final wrap up. So we hope you'll stick his own around. Beer now, oh no. Oh yeah, it's that's not good. Craft beering out there. No it's, good can come of that. It's really hoppy. <laughs> All right, so I suppose actually we should probably <laughs> summon him. Real sour him beer. Uh, who wants to do the honors? I'll do the clapping. Okay. All right. Igor. Uh, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Sorry, we were all out of sorts there because Sean <laughs> fucking abandoned us abandoned at the last us. minute. Igor's so abandoned sad. Abandoned us. <laughs> he didn't even want to bring us the mail tonight. He's so yeah. sad. Uh huh. Usually Sean it takes yeah. care of. Igor just of... peeked around the corner and threw it at us. And went away <laughs> mm-hmm. He doesn't even want to. But see if, you, us. if you write some Sean hate mail, he'll definitely be Sean happy to bring that to mail. us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dom, Leaving us high and dry. Dom, start the revolution. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the start opportunity it. right here. Uh, so if uh, we want to remind you again. Become part of the Freak Show family. Write in because what we're going to do, we uh, we take note of every single one of you. Thank you for writing in. We do and, love you. Uh, mm-hmm. We want you to write in on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. And tonight, Rich Martinez writes in. Hey, Rich. Thanks for writing in. And he says, hello, huge fan of Saturday Night Freak Show. Also a huge horror fan. Yeah. You guys should. So we should do more horror movies. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, You guys should do a review on John Carpenter's Vampires. It was filmed in and takes place in New Mexico, where I'm from. Thank you. And keep up the great reviews. Awesome. Good suggestion. I've never seen that. So, yeah, I would like I would like to do it on the Freak Show because I've never seen it. I only watch good John Carpenter, so, you know, <laughs> they're all good. That's okay. like four movies, you know. <gasps> How do you know that that's not a good one? How do you know that's not oh a good one if you've never seen There's, it? Because I, I mean, yeah, I, know. I mean, everybody one. knows what good and bad <laughs> yeah, John Carpenter is, you know. I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, Sean said he would, Sean is taking it upon Sean himself, would bring I think, it. to bring that one at some point. Well, yeah, it's right in his Seems sweet like spot. Seems like a Sean pick. Like yeah. 1996. It is. It is. It's, it's a Sean movie for sure. 
All right, so about uh, last week's episode where we watched your The Hunter from the Future. So bummed I missed it. Oh, you missed oh, it. Oh, God. Yeah. He's the man. He is the man. <laughs> More gooder than writes in and says, he's the man. He is the man. <laughs> he, he is the man. You guys got to watch your. He also says this movie is glorious garbage. Yeah, it mm-hmm. really is. Like. Mm-hmm. It's great. I can't. So yeah. bummed. I know. Oh, you just, we'll play the theme song for you okay. after, yeah. after this, okay. and yeah. you'll uh, get a uh, taste of what you missed out on. Uh, about our episode, the Babadook. 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 Duck rhymes with book. Duck. Okay. Yep. That's how I try to remember. Uh, Basin Voorhees writes yeah. in and yeah. says, "Got it." <laughs> The Babadook. I, I like it. <laughs> I like it, yeah. The Babadook would have been neat if it had been a 3D animated film in the style of a pop-up book, while the pop-ups were the 3, 3D aspect. They do like the, in Krampus, right? You remember Krampus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they do kind of something like, what's the movie did where they? I saw like an animated pop-up? I don't pop-up. think they did that in Krampus. Did Hellboy, they? The Golden Army? That might have been it. I get what he's saying, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the the Babadook, the actual monster, is not in the that movie enough to make, warrant that. But. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think it would be fun to do if to, if they did like a short on like the special features and did like a pop up yeah. version. That'd be really cool. The prequel. <laughs> They've done a couple yeah. shorts since the movie came out for like certain holidays and stuff. Like oh, they really? Did, they did like a Baba Duck Christmas short. Oh, cool. Um, oh, that yeah. was pretty cool. So like, That's cool. Yeah, that, I mean, it's to do possible, something like that. You know? Yeah, that'd yeah. be really cool to do yeah. like a pop up style. That'd be awesome. Well, he also says, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but that child actor takes the cake for the most annoying performance. You Doesn't don't say, sound like a jerk. Everybody thinks. No, that, yeah, I'm, I messaged him back. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, he he did a really good job. And but even with the context after we knew what was going on, he's still annoying as fuck. I hope that kid's not planning on pursuing a career in acting because he's got an uphill battle, yeah, man. Yeah. Uphill yeah, battle yeah, for him. True. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe maybe when he's like eighteen and give mm-hmm. it another give it another go. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, about the Babadook also. Sorry, Babadook. Man, I just can't help myself. <laughs> uh RVC Masscom writes in. Hey, oh, hey RVC, what up? Shout out. And says uh <laughs> he was great in those old Quiznos commercials. I'm sorry, what? Are they talking about the ones with the weird, like, hamster-looking creatures that, like, were pop I like ups? the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, like, weird, like, like <laughs> stop motion, Babadooks? almost like, no, they weren't, but, like, the mouth kind of looked the same, so yeah. I guess I can see that, but, like, it's I, I think cheese. I know what joke they are making. Oh, I can't remember how. Is I don't know. Like... I have no idea what you guys are talking oh, yeah? about. I have yeah. no clue. I'll show you off my Nightmarish. Key. It is nightmarish, like, like, um... Like cut and paste, kind of like magazine clippings over like a weird hamster. Oh. Like, but like they sang a really terrible Quiznos songs, mm-hmm. and it was it was something that like if you woke up in the middle of the night and saw it on your TV, like I did, you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be like, I dreamed that it didn't, it doesn't actually exist, and then you see it awake the next day, and is you're that, like, oh god, is that your sphere nightmare? <laughs> it, yes, that is the Quiznos subs hamsters are my sphere nightmare. Yes, <laughs> if you if you had to be stuck. In their little habitat, with one of the cast members, who would you want to be stuck with? Sam Jackson. He's the man. He is the man. He is the man. Well, he's I mean, you know, there's your, but I mean, Sam Jackson's the fucking. He's Sam the man Jackson. He is. Yeah. Agreed? Sam Jackson or Dustin Hoffman? Either one seems pretty. Really, Dustin yeah. Hoffman. I'd rather be stuck with Lee Schreiber than Dustin Hoffman. Oh no, Wait, I can't deal with that. No. But Lee Schreiber yeah. in this this character. Yeah, like in the character they're in the movie. Uh, yeah, um, you know what? I'll just go with either one. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right then. So I guess that brings us to the most. Oh uh, God! <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, I just showed Holly the visual of the Quizno subs commercial. He's wearing a top hat, so that's where the Baba Duck oh, reference Wait comes from. Until you hear it sing. Wait till you hear the song. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. That's what I'm saying. I woke up in the middle of the night and Ooh. saw that, and I was like, "That is definitely nightmarish. just dream that. Uh-huh. That is yeah. nightmarish." Yeah. <clears throat> so. That brings us to the most exciting part of the show where the suspense has been growing because you don't know how this is going to shake out. Who's going to like the movie and who's going to hate it? Colin, what did you think of Sphere? Um, Get it? it rhymes with fear, guys. Oh, oh <laughs> shit. It took me this long to make that connection. The fear of Sphere. Is here. I want to be in. I want that be should in, be the tagline. <laughs> I want to be in that workroom where they're like, "Circle, no, mm, yeah, no, try, no." 
You know, try it. Yeah, no. yeah, okay. Yeah. You already have cube. You can't do cube. Yeah. I mean, I like where you were with circle. Can yeah. we work with that? Yeah. Let's go sphere. 3D. Sphere. We'll go sphere. sphere. Yeah. It's in your face. <laughs> Sounds like fear. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'll talk briefly about the positive things about this movie. So there wasn't any. This was, uh, no, okay. The first 20 minutes of setup was not bad. I, uh, Besides the like the <clears throat> exposition dump. Like, remember this. Remember this. That I didn't like. Well, it was clumsy, I would think. Yeah. Ha- I say hand hand ham handed. Yeah. Where it's like, I know that you're basically setting up stuff. It's the Chekhov's gun scenario, right? You're setting all this stuff up to pay off later. <clears throat> and um, I mean, the characters, I guess, were unappealing to me in the first 20 minutes. So that's a problem. Uh, all of them. I just I didn't like anybody. Mm-hmm. And I guess this is just a kind of a problem that maybe I'm having with a lot of uh, like 90s on forward uh, films where it's just like, you know, writers because, you know, good drama is the uh, the cornerstone of, um, you know, a well-told story. They you know, have to generate this conflict in these ways where no one ever really gets along. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I keep going, and this is a dumb way to do it, and I think I've done it on this show before, but I keep going back to, like, the original Friday the 13th, right, that put these camp counselors together in a place. And I know the criticism of that movie is that they don't really have any uh, uh, characterization, but it's, they have personality, and they do seem to, like, you know, those people just get along in an environment, right, and they eventually all have stuff to do, but there's little bits of business for each of them. But they basically aren't all backstabbing, awful, evil people like they are in the Friday the 13th remake, which is why I bring that up, right? Because you can see where it, like, came from and where it went. And Sphere is, like, they're not as hideously awful as those people in the Friday the 13th remake, but they're just kind of these vapid, uh, self-centered, I don't know if I'd say egotistical. That's not entirely true, but they're just... uh, One-dimensional. They got one thing... Yeah, I suppose, right? Mm-hmm. The one yeah. psychological thing that's going to define them. Their career defines them all, basically. But, but this leads to the prob- the ultimate problem that I have with the movie. Technical shortcomings and, and story shortcomings aside, is that at the end of it, we're supposed to sit there and go, um, the, the theme of the movie becomes that the aliens this like benevolent alien intelligence, which you always have, right? The, the extraterrestrial super being gifted humankind with this supernatural ability to make their dreams come true. But because human beings are so flawed, all we could dream about were nightmares. So it's our fault that we do. And I'm like, no, it's you fucking people. Like, because you did this, these four people. And I'm like, well, as a cross section of the type of people they selected to put on this ship, we're just saying that they're like, they were terrible people from the get go. Mm -hmm. You know? So I, it's like, so I don't ascribe to the logic of that or the sentiment of that thing. It's like uh, human beings are shit and we're just not ready to deal with like, you know, we're not capable at this point in our history of, you know, dealing with something that's good and just and, you know, all bright and shiny. I guess it was actually bright and shiny in the case Quite of literally. Sphere. Yeah. Um, but um, I think that that signals to me a lack of imagination on the part of the filmmakers, even though they're saying that, you know, like, well, we had too much imagination and that's what whatever the hell the characters are saying. That. Um, and I'd, be beyond cu- that, I'd be curious. Anyone that has read the book. Oh, yeah. Feel free to write true. in. Yeah. I'd like to hear. I'm sure it's 10 Opinions, times better. Yeah. It has to it be. It has to be. Because it has to <laughs> fill in all the things we don't understand. Be. Yeah. Yeah. But beyond that, it's a terribly made movie. Mm. Uh, it's horribly directed, uh, badly performed, terribly written, uh, badly choppy editing. It makes no goddamn sense. It's confusing as hell. Yep. Uh, intentionally and unintentionally, I think. And. I don't know. I mean, I, you, if you're watching it, we could sit there and point out like an example pretty much in every scene, like how this is a, a, a case study of how not to convey this, yeah. uh, you know, whatever they're trying to convey in this scene. Uh, it's terrible. Wretched. Yeah. Uh, one of the worst movies that I've had the pleasure of sitting down here in the basement. And what? No, it's not that bad. 
No, it's pretty bad. The first 20 minutes, though, save it. So it's not a total loss, but... Uh, it has watchable moments. Yeah, these sci-fi movies, I've noticed, there's a lot of them that, like, uh, they write themselves... They can have... They write a good setup, and then usually they torpedo themselves in the last... The, the third act. Yeah. This one torpedoed itself uh, in the second act and couldn't... And the third act was like... Yeah. <laughs> It couldn't come home. Yeah. So I would say, I mean, like, yeah, he got to avoid at all costs uh, Sphere. It's a terrible, terrible. Oh, we forgot to read the comment from Order of the Gash. Who oh. liked Sphere. Yeah. Please, Order of the Gash. Please explain. Said, I love this movie. <laughs> please write in uh, in greater <laughs> detail and explain. <laughs> I would like to know why. Well, what? We're going to need like a research paper or something. Yeah, no uh, kidding. Why, yeah. Uh, I need... why Sphere? Well, go back to school. Um, write your senior thesis on why Sphere is a good movie. Yeah, I need publish to know, it man. for us. No, maybe. Well, but who knows? Maybe Holly likes it. I don't know. We who knows? Gotten there yet? So maybe, okay. maybe I've got my thesis prepared. <laughs> maybe she'll have a defense of the movie Sphere. So until then, I'm saying uh, walk very far away from Sphere. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Michaela, what did you think? Yeah, Colin, I agree with a lot of your sen- sentiments. Um, I think I said out loud while we were watching this movie uh, like five times, like the editing is horrible. Mm. Um, and that's not something you should notice when you're watching a movie is like bad editing. Like that's the editing should enhance the story, not detract from it. Yep. And the editing, like there might have been a good movie filmed at one point in time here, but the, it could have been edited to hell. I don't know. No. It's possible. The editing made it worse. Yeah. I don't think the coverage is there. The act, the angles yeah. that they need aren't there. Aren't there, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it, it definitely reeks of like, this is a really long book that they cut down to like two hours. Yeah. Um. It. You know, honestly, if you took the book, I'm assuming the book is good. Uh, if you took the book and adapted it into a TV series, that might be the best way to go if you were going to adapt it into anything. Um, but there's just too much here for a, a, what felt like six hours of watching a movie. But it was like, what, just over two, right? 2.14 yeah, or two something 14. like that? Yeah. It felt much longer. Very long for the freak show. Yes, it is. Sure is. Yeah, we're used to those 90-minute features. Yep. Not since Dune have we known. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the editing is terrible. The writing is terrible. The um, letting the audience in to understand what is happening is terrible. There's no proxy. There's no character that is likable enough or relatable enough to get into this film and like really kind of experience it and let it wash over you. Um, there was one point where we're watching this. I just said, I give up. Like I'm tired of trying to understand it and try to fight it. I'm just going to write it out and let it finish. Mm-hmm. Um, but it kind of brought me back around towards the end of that third act when it made that hard left turn into an after school special <laughs> just because I did not see that coming. No, but that did not no. make it any better. You know, it just, no. it just brought my attention back to the movie for a second. Um, yeah, you got to avoid this movie, man. It's it's not good. It's I, if you if you want a geometry movie, go watch Cube instead, man. Like <laughs> Cube is a much better movie. But does anyone want a geometry movie? <laughs> Triangles, pretty good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this movie's just man. I really didn't know what to expect going into it, but this is not what I expected. And oh oh, so there's like seven title cards throughout the movie of like each chapter. There's one called like the monster. There's yeah. one called the spacecraft. All lies. All, all, <laughs> all lies. And if you told me each different chapter was directed and written by a different person, I would believe you yep. because they are all so totally different from one another. It, it's like um, if you were ever in art school like me, you had a, a project called The Exquisite Corpse where you would get a piece of paper and you would start drawing something and then you would like fold it over and hand it to someone else in the class and they would have to draw like off the edge of your drawing and try to continue yep. it without seeing it. That's what this movie feels like. Uh, like, like they didn't see the other half of the script, yeah. and they were just like, um, "Here's the set you're given today. Direct something." Yeah, you that's, know, that's a writing assignment too. In a yeah, lot of writing classes, someone will write one line, and then the next person has to write the next line. Next yeah. person, next person. Well, this feels like yeah. it was done by the actors too, because I swear to God, Sam Jackson, from scene to like, there's a, from scene to scene is not playing the same character. No, that he was. no. You know, in the prior scene. He can walk from one side of the airlock to another and in that time be a completely different person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, it makes no sense. And you got to avoid this movie. Like I said, it's kind of sending. Colin pointed out there's a lot of, I'm a doctor, I'm a scientist, I know things, trying to shove it in your face talk that there's no reason for anybody to hear that. Mm -mm. Uh, It's a hard pass on Sphere. Uh, It rhymes with fear. I assume that's why they picked it. Holly. Um, Yeah, no, I... uh... Oof. 
I I was not surprised when I learned that this movie only grossed fifty million in the box office, so it actually lost thirty million. Not surprised. It deserved learn that. It deserved that. Not surprised. Um, <laughs> one thing that I I read about that I kind of wish had actually happened was Barry Levinson considered having Huey Lewis and Queen Latifah do a duet for the end titles. <laughs> Why didn't that happen? And that should have happened. That would have just made my day. Yeah, um, that might have turned me around. Right? In this movie. That, <laughs> I, I needed that to happen, and it did not happen. Uh huh. <sighs> that, that's a loss. That's a waste. Sphere was shit. It was absolute shit. Everything you guys said, I completely agree with. I had not seen this beforehand. That's um, no excuse. I went <laughs> I went on just just a hunch. I watched the trailer and I was like, "Yeah, this could be a freak show movie." Um the trailer is very misleading. It looked a lot more exciting than what it was. This was the goddamn movie that wouldn't end. And when it did end, it, it ended It felt longer than Waterworld. It it felt longer than Waterworld. Yeah. Waterworld it was did. a breeze compared to this it movie. It did. It so did. And it it, it ended in hand holding. <laughs> Hand holding. I mean, what? What? It's called kumbaya. <laughs> oh my god! I, I could just, I can't. I, I couldn't with this movie. Like, I, I can't tell you how many times during watching this, I literally just go, just said, "What?" <laughs> like that's all I could come up with. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what I was watching. I didn't know what this piece of shit was. This is, oh my god, and. I, I'm I'm shocked. Like the the cast in you know Barry Levinson has put out some pretty successful movies. I cannot believe how horrible this actually was. I'm I'm shocked. That was the biggest shocker of this movie. Not that Sphere is not an actual monster, but it's your own fears. That wasn't the shock. Your own spheres. Your own spheres. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, oh God! It was such shit. I can't even. Like, I feel like I'm doing the freak show a disservice. This is like my second shit movie in a row. <laughs> and I feel like in my next one, I have, yeah, to really, well done, I have to really amp it up. Yeah, this movie was horrible. <laughs> I don't know what order of the gash is thinking. I would like to know his reasoning behind loving this. Because I have no idea. I have no fucking clue. Mm-hmm. This is crap. Don't watch this goddamn movie. Ugh. Unless you hate yourself. Then maybe you should watch it. <laughs> you hate your life and you want to waste your own time. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Don't don't ever watch this piece of shit movie. I've it's never understand, understood people's love for Event Horizon either. Either which I guess the the idea. See, I can at least kind of understand people's appeal of that. Like, I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I get why they Just like it. It's like got a horror atmosphere. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. I get I, it. This movie was not scary in the slightest. Like nothing about it was even remotely no. terrifying. I'm gonna have to have a hard talk with my brother because he's the one that told me to watch this. <laughs> Yeah. If you're listening right now. He doesn't you know, listen. He doesn't there, listen. You know, no. You got a reckoning coming for you. Oh. You're going to reap the world. Oh, I'm coming and hell's coming with me. That's right. Goddamn better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's uh, Sphere, which you shouldn't watch on no, Saturday Night No, Break no, Show. no. And, you know, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say if Sean was here, I don't think he would recommend it either. I don't think Actually, so. no. we were talking about yeah. it's probably a good thing Sean didn't watch this because he might have had a meltdown. Like Sean, yeah. might have brain, <laughs> his brain might have broken watching this. <laughs> like I might have, I might have lost his trust. There might have been more <laughs> screaming though. That could have been. Oh yeah. yeah. He would have been yelling at this <laughs> Yeah, he would have. <laughs> but I don't know what is happening. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> So next week we're gonna be watching a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we watching next week? So I got a taste, and now we got to get back in the cage. We're gonna watch Dri- Drive Angry, yes! shot in three D. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. I have yes. it in three D. Awesome. Oh yeah, so Excellent. we're gonna don the three D specs. All right, Nicholas Cage, the Cage Rage, the Cage Rage. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark.